Santa Claus is coming to the Vicksburg Grace Brethren Church. Saturday, December 19th from 2 to 4 p.m. There will be gifts for all the children. Please wear masks and socially distance. Good morning and welcome to the Vicksburg Grace Brethren Church morning worship service. I hope the pastor's message will encourage your walk with the Lord. Well, good morning. Yeah, Santa Claus coming to town right here at Vicksburg Grace Brethren Church. Thanks for being willing to... Um, supply many many gifts you see them up here there's more that we have as well we are looking so forward to this we really are um just because you can't go see santa claus at the mall i know i'm so disappointed i go and see him every year he still doesn't bring me anything i don't know i, I keep telling him I'm, i try to be a good pastor right i try i try but i don't know just not cutting the mark yet anyhow um with santa claus let me just say this we're going to do it so so safe that you will be so proud of us, right? Because everything that's happening right now, and we do want to practice safety, and I appreciate you practicing safety. I see you coming in with your mask on, and if you're more than six feet away from people, you're able to um, take them off if you feel comfortable. If you feel comfortable wearing them the whole time, that is fine as well. Um, but how we're gonna do this safely, I didn't post on the internet yet, but it is in the paper. What we're gonna do, we're gonna have people um, park their cars outside. We will have Santa Claus set up in here. We have a special spray that I won't even tell you the name of it because I'm hiding it. Um, we have a special spray that continues to kill bacteria and viruses for like 48 hours. I sprayed before, we have sprayed after. Kids will um, be brought in from a car, so we need all hands on deck that we could possibly have. We need people lining up cars outside so we know who is coming in first. Um, because sometimes if you hop out of line, I don't know, it's really a bad thing today. It's like the biggest sin in our society to be a line skipper, right? <laughs> um, unfortunately, that's the biggest sin in our society. Um, so we want to make sure that each car that's brought in is, is recognized when they're, they're brought in. And we send somebody out to bring them in. We will bring them in one at a time. Uh, we bring them in through that door. They're going to exit through the door on the ramp. Um, we have to make sure that Santa is protected as well, for that he will have a good December 4, um, 24th, Christmas Eve. Um, so we want to keep him safe and, and his workers safe. So we have hand sanitizer for Santa between each child as well. So that's, that's real important. Um, so we're going to do this safe, safely, effectively, and obeying all the laws so um and each kid as well when they come in and everyone will be tested there at our nifty thermometer if they have a fever they will not be permitted to come in uh, we give them a gift and uh, recheck it we're going to have some hand scanners as well to help us um uh, touchless infrared so that each one can be tested before so um by following all of those precautions, having masks here for the kids as well, um, we will be doing this as safe as going down to Walmart and taking a stroll through the aisles. So um, any other questions or suggestions, please um, get in contact with me. Um, welcome to any idea to make it as safe as possible. And I think following those guide, <coughs> excuse me, those guidelines will do uh, the job quite effectively. So we are excited. Hey, thanks so much, though, for really bringing in gifts. I'm going to paint the church sign that's the trunk or treat sign, and I'm going to put it up like just for like three days out here because it's a great advertisement. I would like to, my goal, and be praying about this because I'll, it's all dependent upon God and what he does. We're in the paper. We are online through the Morrison Cove as well. And it would be really awesome if we get a hundred children coming through and just like what we do for for trunk or treat that would be so wonderful um and you know this year kids can't really have pictures taken with santa i think this is a prime time 
to really be doing this. I've never done this before in the history of my, my pastoring. I just saw an opportunity that I think was too great this year to pass up uh, for the church to um, recognize that, you know what, hey, Christmas is still here. Christmas is not canceled, right? Um, so um, any questions, concerns, um, I will entertain them. Please let me know. And if I can make it better and safer um, in any way, I, I, I would do that. Um, so as long as it's feasible, right? <laughs> um, you were not I thought about this. I, I know it's a crazy idea. Uh, I didn't know what the temperature was going to be. I thought that what we could do was rent a dunk tank, fill it up with complete hand sanitizer, like, you know, and as soon as they, 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 they leave, like completely dunk the kids or right before, you know, you just hit the little switch, they fall in this great big bucket of hand sanitizer, and we could do it. We could do it that way, but that's a little extreme. It did cross my mind. I, I know, so many things crossed my mind. Um, anyhow, <laughs> Christmas Eve participation. Um, I want to encourage you, if you haven't been here on Christmas Eve, it's always a wonderful time. And I encourage participation as well. If you like to sing, if you like to play anything, if you like to read a poem, if you would like to open the service in prayer or close the service in prayer, if you would like to say anything uh, or do anything for the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to participate. There's a participation sheet right there in the back. You may just um, fill that out. Let me know what you're doing um, for we can organize that service together. Um, with you. And as I said last week, um, we will have candlelight. Um, that's always an, a wonderful experience together, seven o'clock. And the message is, is a message, honestly, I did before. Um, it, uh, it is on the Christmas carol, um, past, present, and future, but I have incorporated the um, video into this of the Muppets with the Christmas carol. So it's going to be really cool. For all ages, um, should hold your attention long enough for a 15-minute message or so. Um, so there's Christmas cards in the back that need signs. So if you, um, for the shut-ins, if you would sign them, wish them a Merry Christmas before you go. I try to remember that and write that down there on my message sheet. Um, that's back there. Also, some of you have already picked up a copy of, <coughs> excuse me, The Daily Bread. And that is for January, February, March. Um, so large print is available at both um, exits. Also, um, the, the machines are on. Sometimes, um, so you, you know, they, they work, the hand sanitizers. Um, if it's not on, I just noticed the one downstairs. I had to turn it on. So if you're trying to come in, um, there's just a button on the side of those machines. Just always make sure that's on and you can sanitize prior to and after our services. Um, anything I'm forgetting as far as announcements? That's a lot of announcements, wasn't it? Right. Well, a Savior has been born. Amen? His name is Christ Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the tradition of giving gifts extend back to his birth when God gave us his son to be the payment for all mankind's sin. That's the glorious message of the birth of Jesus. And then it continued in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. It says there, it is recorded, that when the wise men arrived there at the house, it says after coming into the house, they saw the child, they saw Jesus, they saw the Messiah, they saw the child, with Mary his mother, and they fell to the ground, and they worshipped him. Then it says, then opening their treasures, they presented to him what? Gifts. Gifts. Christmas is a time for giving, isn't it? It's a time to remember that God gave his gift of his only begotten son, the most prized joy of heaven, his only begotten son of the triune God, given him to us. And the wise men who traveled afar 
or as these magis have traveled afar. It says that when they came, they fell to the ground and they worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold. Now that's a precious metal. I don't have a lot of it, but it's a precious metal, isn't it? Um, they presented to him gold. We don't know what that gold was used for. Maybe it was to take care of Mary. Maybe it, um, in the absence of Joseph. Um, we don't know. But I'm sure it was used wisely. And I'm sure it was used up. As they never get rich. It was gold though. Presented to him. A precious metal. Frankincense. Which was a perfume. And then myrrh which was an anointing oil. These were gifts of honor. These were gifts that are worthy of a king. And these magi who traveled afar, they realized that God gave, their great, he gave his greatest gift. And it was time for them to present gifts to this Christ child. And that is what they did. These were the same gifts, ironically, that were offered to the god Apollo in 243 B.C. By, to, by another king. You can read about that in history. Very interesting. But during a Christmas play, three six-year-old boys acted out the part of the wise men as presenting their gifts before the nativity scene. Each boy stepped forward with what he was offering. The first boy held out his arms and his and they all dressed up as kings, and he said, this is gold. The second boy knelt before the Christ child and said, and this is your myrrh. The last boy stepped forward and declared, Frank sent this. <laughs> yeah, he, he got some of you got that. Um, gifts, and the giving of gifts is the idea of, that goes back to the wise men, go back to the idea that God gave a gift, and Gift-giving continues to this day to be emphasized at Christmas. And in fact, the American family on average spends well over $1,000 in Christmas gifts each year. That's a lot of money from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Um, billions of dollars is spent. Um, some have estimated that some people spend as much as 15% of their yearly income and buying gifts. Um, they buy lots of things from toys to um, Barbies to electronics. Um, and even a large portion of, of that money goes to book sales. Really, it does. Um, and it brings a lot of businesses who are in the red all year into the black. Well, as you know, this year, Christmas shopping is becoming a little difficult and different from any other type of Christmas shopping we've done before. There's only two places to buy, really, right? Five below. <laughs> and <laughs> I had to say that, sorry. Um, yeah, we, we were there. It's nice there. <laughs> and, you know, Amazon and Walmart, right? You're, I mean, they have racked in all the money this year because of the pandemic. And... I don't know about you, but even before um, the pandemic, we still did a lot of our shopping at Walmart because it was quick. It was easy to get things. Um, there are Black Friday sales that, you know, we didn't even go to this year because, what, everything's different this year, right? I didn't find as many good deals online this year. I don't know if you guys did. If you did, let me know what deals you found and rub it in. Um, I didn't see the deals. Because, you know, I think that they couldn't get the people into the stores, so they didn't want to slash the prices, take huge losses on some big items to hopefully get other people suckered into some of the other gimmicks that they have out, right? I know, they get my wife every year with that. I just go in and get what I want and leave, get the big ticket item that's marked down and, you know, feel like a winner, right? Um, well, I don't know about you, but um, how you shop or where you shop, but... You know, you try to always get the best deals when you can, right? Now, go back with me a few years here, if you would. When you walk through the doors of Walmart, and this might date some of the younger people sitting there, who was the first person to greet you? 
the Walmart greeter, right? Now the Walmart greeters are usually pretty silent. They just stand there. But they have an important role to play, I'm sure. And they're there for a reason. But it used to be when you went to Walmart, the greeter would, would welcome you. And do you remember when they would hand you the yellow smiley stickers that you would put on and you would feel so proud? You felt, wow, man, I am welcomed here. This place makes me smile. They don't do that anymore. But here's what I want to encourage you to do. When you shop at Walmart, and I'm sure many of you still be going there, or even when you drive up to the thing to pick up your order, tell people this year, Merry Christmas. That is a great way to evangelize and to spread the Christmas message. Now, they might not be allowed to say it back to you, but you can say it to them. And if you say it to them, they might repeat it back to you. Don't say happy holidays. Don't say have a good day. Say Merry Christmas. We're in just two weeks to Christmas. We need to share this Christmas message. Um, so, all right. Um, now that you have received your smiley stickers of Merry Christmas, right? I want to give you um, five suggestions this year for your shopping list. And I want you this morning to go shopping with me as we look at the scriptures together, right? Uh, when I say go shopping with me, believe me, I'm a quick shopper, right? Man, I can't tell you how many hours I've sat in a car at Walmart. How many men are with me on that? Come on, guys, raise your hand. Thank you. I, I see that hand, Jeremiah, back there. Yes, yeah, sit in the car because what? They're shopping. Then D says, I'm going to run down to Walmart just for, for bread or something. And then two hours later, she appears. Well, I, I ran into so-and-so, and I ran into Cheryl and couldn't get away, and I ran into... No, you get the idea, right? How many have you done that? Now, when I go there, I like wearing my mask now because I can disguise myself a little better, right? You can get in and get out before people recognize who you are. Oh, this is, this is pretty good. I'm starting to like 2020. I'm going to hate to see it end. You know, this is kind of fun doing this stuff, right? So yeah, I, I kind of like feel like a secret shopper wearing my mask now, right? You know, nobody knows who you are. Sometimes you think you know people from a distance and you get a little, oh, that's not so-and-so, right? It's hard to tell who people are anymore. It's kind of fun. Mystery shoppers, secret shoppers, it all ties into this Christmas season. But I want you to do this. When you're there or when you're picking up, tell people, Merry Christmas. Because whether you're a secret shopper or not, we have a message to tell, don't we? And I want us to go down the first aisle. The first aisle. And, and the, the whole idea, the whole premise of this is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. It's written on the top of your sheet there in the back of your bulletin. If you turn it over, you can follow along with me if you want. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15, this is the Christmas message in one verse. It says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. God gave each of us a gift. And this gift is indescribable. means it is too good. Sometimes, you know, you, you look at things and you see things and you think, that's too good to be true. That thing can't live up to its expectations. It won't work the way they want it to work. You get it home, you're frustrated with it. I'll tell you what. If you pick up the indescribable gift of Jesus Christ, you will never be disappointed. Amen? You'll be delighted your whole life, and here's some reasons why. As we scroll down this first aisle, we find that this gift, and the best gift, is from God. If you're following along in your notes there, the best gift in the world is from God. It's this indescribable gift. And the best gift would be a personal gift. That's point number one. When we shop, our gift should be a personal gift. 
We're not shopping for ourselves. You know, when I shop for myself, myself, I usually go right down to the electronics, right? The gadgets. Um, that, that's, that's what does it for me. Um, you know, my wife would not appreciate it if I got her a pair of high um, impendence woofers system for the car, right? You know, well, what did you get me for Christmas this year? We're going to upgrade our sound system in our car this year. That's what we're going to do. I'd be in big trouble. Yeah, that just doesn't interest her. So if you're shopping for someone, you want to make sure that your gift is a personal gift, right? She might like clothes, but not the new camouflage hunting outfit that you like, right? So she, you know, you got to tailor your shopping to who you're shopping for. You see, the person you're shopping for and the people that you buy gifts for, you have to make sure that the gift is a personal gift, right? Um, God gave us a very personal gift. He gave us his son. That's the word you're looking for. His son to die for absolutely everyone. You got to remember this. God came to this world for you individually and collectively. He didn't just come for the rich. He didn't just come for the poor. He didn't just come for the white people, the black people, the brown people, you know. Um, he didn't just come for people of the United States of America. He came for everyone. Red, yellow, black, and white, what? We're all precious in his sight. And he came and he died for you personally because we're sinners. Because we've sinned. And the Bible says that whosoever will may come. I'm a whosoever. You're a whosoever. And this gift that God gave in his son is a very personal gift. He handpicked the most personal gift and it was picked by the Father. And it was personally given by God the Son, Jesus Christ. When he came to earth, he came to earth as a human, right? He didn't have to. He chose to. And he lived on the earth and he was completely human. Can you believe this? The God of the universe becomes an infant and has to be cared for by a teenage mother, Mary. When he's hungry, he cries. He gets a stomach ache. He cries. When he experienced heartache, he cried in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he experienced loneliness, he was tempted by the devil. He felt hunger. He knew what it was like to take on a human flesh and feel the pain and the emotions that we experience in life. God of the universe stepped down from heaven to walk personally as a man for each of us. A perfect man to die for us. That's what makes Christmas. God becoming man. The nails that they crucified him with, hurt his hands just as they would hurt yours and mine. So why did he do it? He looked across time. He looked across eternity. And he saw you. And he saw me. And he saw those who would believe in him. And he said, you are worth it. And I love you. And I would die for you. And he gave himself that personal gift for each and every one of us. His gift is personal. Personal because if you were the only one here on earth, Jesus would have come to redeem you, to die for you. That's why he said it to Eve when it was just Eve and just 
um, her first son, saying, you know what, um, that you will have a son of this born of the seed of a woman, made the promise to her. She had no idea there would be billions of people here on earth. But God made that personal promise to her. Well, that's the first aisle. We're cruising right along this Walmart shopping spree, aren't we? The second thing I see about this indescribable gift, it's a practical gift. It's a practical gift. So as we make this turn to go down the second aisle, I'm always confused now when they had those arrows. I was running into people. People were running into me. I couldn't get to the left. People couldn't get to the right. That was a mess, wasn't it? Who thinks of these things? Well, we just line them up like uh, cattle, right? Run them through this aisle, not thinking that we have brains and know that the other side of the aisle, I can, I'm in arm's reach, I can get it, but I got to stay in this side. I don't know. <laughs> That's insulting to our intelligence, isn't it? Take it as you want. But God gave us a practical gift. Um, look with me at this great passage of scripture in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Acts chapter 4. And there is salvation in no one else. Oh, this is practical, isn't it? Meaning you can't be saved by anything else in this world. Money can't save you from your sins. People can't save you from your sins. And you can't save yourself from your sins. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which what? We must be saved. So when we go Christmas shopping for those we love, it doesn't always have to be the best, most expensive gift. As the saying goes, it's the thought that counts, right? Um, sometimes the best gifts are sometimes those bargain gifts that you find, right? And they're nice to buy for yourself, right? This is on sale. This is a bargain. That's why I got that for myself, right? <laughs> you ladies are smelling. You use that all the time, right? <laughs> I couldn't find this gift any other place, but this deal was unpassable, and you get yourself gifts. Yeah, it's a practical gift, though. You're going to use it, right? You're going to wear it. It's, you're going to like it. All right. So, um, you know, and this is the idea here. Let's give each other practical gifts. One woman said to her husband, I got you some very practical gifts this year. He said, oh, as he's there with his um, um, stocking and opening up, you know what the practical gifts that every man gets every year from their wife? Socks and underwear right? Very practical. You think we wear them out or something? No. Why do you keep buying them every year for us? We want something different, more practical, right? Um, so two young boys are coming up to the Christmas season, and um, they were making their list and everything, and one kid explained to the other, one kid said, oh, I want money. And the one boy replied to the other, well, don't you know money can't buy you happiness? He says, well, how's that? The boy says, well, to be happy with money, you have to convert your money into toys. Isn't that the truth? Amen? Having money in the bank doesn't make you happy. It makes you wealthy, right? But it doesn't do anything for your happiness. You got to convert it into a toy. I think there's a lot of wisdom in what that boy said. You know, a practical gift. But how practical can we get when God was the only one who could buy us and purchase our salvation. It doesn't get any more practical than that, does it? Um, what is the most impractical Christmas gift you can get for someone? And if you get it for them, it's a secret sign that you actually don't like the person. Do you know what it is? I received some in my lifetime, and maybe you did too. Fruit cake. Yeah. Fruit cake is a waste. <laughs> Charles, stop laughing. Fruit cake is a waste, a total waste of money. Amen. How many agree? 
You know, yeah, there, there. Some of you like fruitcake, I know. You are fruitcake, you know. Fruitcakes. Um, it's, it's so nasty, and I like fruit. I'm a fruit person, but I hate fruitcake. It is the nastiest type of cake that anyone could make. And I, I heard that, you know, some, I heard the story of a guy who, he got it for Christmas one time, and of course he spit it out, he gave it to his dog, his dog coughed it up. You know, it's pretty bad when your dog doesn't even eat fruitcake. So, you know, yeah, it does make, in time, a perfect doorstopper. It does make a good doorstopper in time. Um, so Jesus has given us, though, my dear friends, the most practical gift of all, hasn't he? He has given to us eternal life. And that's better than any fruit cake. That's better than any socks and underwear. I mean, this is practical. When God gave us something we couldn't get, we didn't have enough money to buy our salvation, amen? There's not enough toys that will keep us here on earth long enough to enjoy them. We needed salvation. It was a very practical gift that God has given to us. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the free gift of God, it's free. Now, the best gifts in life are free, right? The, but the free gift of God is eternal life and Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right, we just completed the second turn in the aisle at Walmart. Let's keep shopping this indescribable gift. Third, it has to be a pleasing gift. And if you're looking for the answer there, and, and number two, a practical gift, Jesus has given us salvation for those who turn to him. Now, a pleasing gift. Um, the gifts that we give should bring joy, right, to someone else. It should be pleasing. Um, if I would buy for each of my kids a Christmas gift and wrap it and put it under the tree this year, and I gave them a Bible commentary, I'm going to have some kids that just look at me like kind of cross-eyed, like, what are you doing, Dad? Right? I like the Bible commentaries, but my kids aren't going to like a Bible commentary, right? Um, so you, you get maybe Jaden going to Bible college. He says, yeah, get me a Bible commentary. Um, shaking his head yes up there. So, yeah, if I would buy my other kids Bible commentaries, they'd be like, ah, I don't know. Just give me a Bible. Give me a music CD of Christian music. I'll be good with that. But see, God gave an unspeakable, pleasing gift, didn't he? He really did. It's a, it's a pleasing gift. And it's an unspeakable gift. I'm using that verse there in, in 1 Corinthians 9.15. It's that unspeakable gift in Jesus. And it brings us to this point. What more could I ask for? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 9, Oh, what man is there of you whom if his son asks, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask of him? And James 1.17 puts it this way. Every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light. So God gives pleasing gifts gifts, doesn't he? Now, when I open the gift of God, and that's what I encourage you to do, open it and see if it's pleasing. Do you know what happens when you open and you say, I want to be a God pleaser with my life? Ever make that your goal, your ambition? You know, God gave me a pleasing gift. I want to be a God pleaser um, when you decide to please God with your life, do you know what happens? You magically, if I can use that word, uh, you magically um, have the peace of Christmas. Uh, look with me at Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Because, you know, Christmas peace isn't for all people. In Luke chapter 2, Verse 14. The angels came and declared glory to God in the highest and on earth, 
peace among men. And you see so many Christmas cards saying peace, right? Christmas peace. How do you get Christmas peace? With whom he is what? Well, please. You have to be walking with God. You have to be a person of faith. If you want to experience the peace of Christmas, you have to know the Christ of Christmas. The old slogan, K-N-O-W, no God. K-N-O-W, peace. No God, no peace. And then no and O, no God, no peace, right? No God, no peace, no God, no peace. God is a pleasing gift. It's this unspeakable gift that brings us Christmas joy. And that's what he has wrapped for us there in aisle three. Well, let's go on to aisle number four. Aisle four there in describing this indescribable gift. It's a permanent gift. You know, the best gift you can give to somebody is a gift that's going to have lasting value, right? Not something that's cheaply made that will be break on your first day, right? How many kind of times as a young child you opened up that gift you've been waiting for all year and then, you know, you're, it breaks on you, doesn't work. Or you get an Xbox, you get the red ring of death, right? Um, you know, who knows what's going to come out on these new systems, right? Who knows what bugs might be there? Um, it happens, doesn't it? No matter what it is. Maybe you get a toll and you think it's going to work on the job and then it doesn't work. You get back to your old ones. So many times we get gifts that aren't permanent gifts. You know, when we talk about Christ and we talk about Christmas gifts, um, it goes beyond just one Christmas day. God gave us a permanent gift. When he gave us his son, he gave us his son forever. The effects of that will last for all eternity. In John 10, 28, Jesus says, I give unto them eternal life. Oh, that's a permanent gift. Christ coming to the manger wasn't just to save us for a day. Wasn't just to bring a Christmas nativity scene into our lives that we decorate for once a year. It's for all eternity. It is eternal life. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Never. Never. And then it says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. What a verse. This gift that Jesus Christ gave of himself is a gift that will last forever. So literally what Jesus did for us and coming to a manger, being wrapped in swaddling clothes, you know what he really did? He wrapped himself up. And he said, here I am. I am your permanent gift. And he wrapped himself up in human flesh and took on the form of a man. And he bore our shame. He bore our sinfulness. Him who was completely sinless became sin on a cross for each of us that we could have eternal life in Jesus Christ. So it is a gift that is a permanent gift. And I like this too. It is a, God gave us, if you're looking there for the God gave us eternal life passage there. Um, and then the fifth turn that we go to Walmart in this aisle, and I'm speeding through there. I walk through Walmart so fast. I don't even need to wear a mask. I wouldn't catch coronavirus how fast I run through Walmart. Just joking. <laughs> but I do, right? And I want to get out of there, right? Um, so in this one, we come to this purchase gift. Because no matter how fast you go through, you have to go through the checkout line, don't you? 
and I look at them, I scan them really quick with my eyes. I'm good at that. You know, as I'm, I make that left turn from the food aisle down there, I glance over. My eyes are already scouting out where I'm going. You know, I look down real quick through the, the cashiers. They're always so slow, right? They got big lines. And even if I got stuff, I find the perfect spot where I'm going to get in and get out the quickest. I beat everybody at Walmart. It's so good. Um, I know. If you want, to, want some speed lessons on speed shopping, I give them to you. All the tricks and tips, right? Um, the verse I want to show you, though, with this is 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. It says there, And the life was manifested, and we have seen... And the life was manifested, and we have seen um, and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to you. Manifested means it has appeared to us. It is there for us. It is there for our taking. It is a purchase gift. Romans 5.15 also says, So also is the free gift of God. For if through the offenses of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and, and the gift of grace by which one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto the many. What kind of Christmas gift is the best gift you could ever give? Is one that lasts, Right? It's like the little girl who, after each service, she just loved your minister. And she would come up and bring him some hand-fresh-picked flowers every Sunday. And in the springtime, he always got these flowers from this girl. And, you know, um, he, he asked her one time, he felt a little awkward, you know, getting flowers from the girl every Sunday. And he said, why do you give me flowers? She answered, because I love you. He said, do you bring such gifts and love to Jesus Christ? Oh, yes, said the little girl. He already has my heart. Isn't that awesome? You know, and the best thing you could do this Christmas is just what that little girl does. Give Jesus your heart. Because, you know, Jesus has given us a personal, a practical, a pleasing, a permanent and a purchase gift already for us. And all he says is, you know what? You just have to give me your life. You have to just repent, turn to me, believe in me, accept me and receive me. That's the message of Christmas. The message of Christmas is that God sent his son, yes. But then that is an invitation, isn't it? It's an invitation because God has visited us. He extended to us an invitation to believe on him. And as many as received his gift, they have eternal life. The Bible describes it as an indescribable gift. That is what God has given to us in the person of Jesus Christ. It has his five great qualities and even though I can look at those qualities, I can still think of many more. God's gift is too precious to ever pass up. God loves you. He gave himself for you. If you were the only sinner here in this world, Christ would have came and died for you to redeem you. That is why God became a man. And he says, just give me your heart. Just give me your heart. Believe in me. Believe in the miracle of Christmas. All right, at this time, we will have Jane come up, and as Carol gets ready, I'm going to ask each of you, though, to bow your heads and close your eyes. Maybe you've heard the Christmas message many, many times, and I hope you have. But Jesus is certainly the reason for the season. And this is a time to pause on a Sunday, to refocus our lives. Maybe 
you already know Christ, but Christmas just doesn't feel that special in the year 2020. Say, Lord Jesus, peel away all these exterior things of this world and let me fall in love with you again. Renew my love and my commitment for you like never before. Maybe you're here and you never accepted the Christ of Christmas. There's no better opportunity than the moment of now. As Jesus said, or as the writer of Hebrews said, today is the day of salvation. No other religion on the face of the earth can ever deal with sin. But Christ has dealt with it. He died so that we might live and he was resurrected to life for we could ever, forever live with him. He could say, Lord Jesus, I believe in the Christ of Christmas. All the other things we celebrate and do are fun and enjoyable and wonderful traditions. But I need the Christ of Christmas to make it all real. And I receive you, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. I recognize you as my God. And I believe in you because you've done for me what no one else could ever or would ever have done. You died in my place to satisfy the holy wrath of God upon sin. Now I'm no longer separated. Now I'm brought close to the meaning of Christmas. I give you my heart. Amen. Thank you for watching our morning message at the Vicksburg Grace Brethren Church. If you do not have a regular place of worship, consider joining us Sundays, Sunday school at 9 o'clock and morning worship at 10 o'clock.